Welcome to Young Asia Television. And welcome to the program. It has been tragedy upon tragedy for the displaced people in the north, and this past weekend they have had to bear yet another calamity. Torrential rains beat down on the largest of the IDP camps, Manic Farm, on Friday through till Sunday, flooding tents and kitchens, overflowing toilets, and displacing thousands of people within the camps themselves. Our first story this week examines the situation further. The situation is indeed dire. Temporary tents have been hastily erected, but they are overcrowded. Sanitation facilities are inadequate. Food and drinking water are in short supply because vehicular access has been blocked due to muddy, eroded soil. Numbers of the flood-affected displaced are still unverified. Some place them as high as 20,000. There have reportedly been attempts by the government to relocate some of them to SOS villages and school buildings, or at the very least, to tents on higher ground. Even so, TNA politician Suresh Premachandran is not at all optimistic about how the situation is being addressed by the government. Actually, the government, they are having the duty to do it. But government for the international consumption they are saying we are doing all the preparatory works. At the same time, they are saying uh, we are doing the demining work. I don't know how long time they are going to take. It may take two years, three years, four years. And at the same time, some minister says so far we didn't, you know, uh, get the LTT out of the camp. Still there are LTTs. Still there are LTT sympathizers and supporters. So they are saying still, you know, those sort of uh, works are going on. So I don't think the government is having any plan to resettle them immediately. The government has often referred to the predicament of the displaced as a common problem, one shared by every citizen of Sri Lanka, and one that needs everyone's help to resolve. Yet Premachandran claims that he has no access to the camps and to the people. The civilians can go and see their people, see their children or relatives or kith and kin. Whereas, you know, the, part of the Tamil parliamentarians, they are not, not only the Tamil parliamentarians, they are not allowing the opposition parliamentarian, even the UNB, they can't go. Right? We do not know why the government is behaving like that. They are saying it's a democratic country, and they, they said they are having the democratic elections, and we people won the elections in Bavonia. And we are having all the rights to go. So we are the people elected by them. But the government is not allowing us to go. Why? Because if we speak to the people, we will tell the truth to the international community. That is the only thing, nothing else. You see? But actually, as a political party, elected by those people, working among them, so we have already we have taken up this matter with the government, as I told you with the advice of the uh, president. We have already taken up these matters with the international community. We, we are trying to meet the United Nations representative over here. So we are doing our maximum to pressurize the government to evacuate these people from that place to, you know, to the proper area. The problem isn't just that the civilians are displaced once again within the camps themselves. If it isn't handled properly, the rains could cause serious problems beyond just flooding. Disease, for instance, is a prominent risk at this time. Premachandran feels that the only solution to the urgent problem at hand is to evacuate all flood-affected civilians to safer areas. Our suggestion, number one, immediately thousands of people can be sent back to their own land. That is number one. They have to do it immediately. Right? Number two, if anybody who are having friends and relatives, they have to send them to, to their house if they are willing to go. The rest can be settled down you know, there are schools in Klinochi, in Mulatheve. These people can be moved to those schools because at least there is a you know, building. You can renovate it immediately. You can keep those people there. So at least, you know, gradually they can be resettled. Whereas in Wavunia, 
small tents. There is no facilities. Even if rain comes, they can't do anything. So these people can be, you know, if they were brought back to Kalinochi and Bavania, they can be put in various schools and gradually, you know, they can be resettled. So these are the op options actually uh, uh, every, you know, they are having. But I don't know whether the government is having the political will to do these things. That's the main question. Mr. Premachandran's outlook is bleak, but the government insists that there are plans underway to relieve the urgency of the situation with the help of foreign donors. This was especially highlighted during a press conference held to acknowledge the food and non-food relief donated by the government of India. Media persons from India and Sri Lanka were eager to find out more about the weekend flooding and press the officials present for more information regarding the crisis and the accountability of both the government and humanitarian agencies such as the UN. The responsibility is, is the governments. We've been trying to help in different areas. Uh, for example, food has been assisted through the United Nations. We've been very much involved with water and sanitation. But the basic site preparation in terms of the, the layout, uh, the bulldozing, the clearing of the sites, the laying out of the the drainage has been a government responsibility. Uh, since June, uh, at the request of the government, we've been uh, asked to assist with drainage and we hope to support government agencies in further improvements to the drainage. And I think that has actually worked in the sense that if you look at this, these terrible things that happened over the last few days with, as a result of this heavy downpour, uh, the areas where work had been undertaken, which was in what's called Zone 2 and Zone 3, as well as uh, Kadragamar village and zone one, uh, there wasn't as heavy effects from the rain, whereas in zone four where that work hadn't begun yet. So I we're optimistic that as the work goes on, it will improve the conditions for the people there. The floods in Manic Farm and the problems they have caused a community already under massive strain is a grim reminder of the need to be more efficient and effective where resettlement of IDPs is concerned. Halfway into the much talked of 180 day plan for returning 80% of the displaced, there has not been much visible progress. The events over the last few days only emphasize just how vulnerable these people still are. However, both Minister Rishad Bathyuddin and Neil Buna appeared optimistic about accomplishing this target in due time. First, uh, demining activities are uh, going on. Uh, plus, uh, every area, uh, road construction are going on, uh, electricity supply already uh, giving, uh, the activities are going on. I think uh, all the government agents of uh, that district, five districts, government agents, another uh, divisional secretary, secretaries, another officials, uh, provincial council officials, together they are working hard. Uh, within 180 days' time, uh, we are planning to resettle more people, I think. Yeah, I don't think there's necessarily a direct relationship between the, um, the flooding and resettlement. I think the resettlement will go ahead when the, the government is confident that uh, the areas are safe from mines and that basic services have been put together. And I think they're working very hard to do that. But I think uh, what the flooding does do is highlight that uh, it's important that these people get out sooner rather than later. Because even with the best will in the world, to have so many people in one particular place in those conditions, uh, even if everyone's trying to help the conditions, is, is not some, a place where people should be for a long time. So I think it really highlights the importance of early returns.